Many people know that before the Holocaust, there were over 3 million Jews in Eastern Europe. However, not many know that at the beginning of the 16th century, there were roughly 10, maybe 20,000 Jews in Poland. This fast and unprecedented demographic growth remains one of the unsolved puzzles around the Jewish experience in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Generations of historians have tried to explain this and suggested different answers, such as high birth rate, high level of hygiene due to the kosher laws, or absence of the ethos of celibacy popular among Christians, and even the fact that Jews were not enlisted to the English modern armies. Today, many historians agree that lower infant and child mortality was one of the factors that contributed to the increase in Jewish population numbers. They do not, however, give any sufficient explanation for it. In my project, I claim that Jewish early childcare was one of the factors that contributed to the lower infant mortality and in turn to the unprecedented growth of Jews in Poland-Lithuania. I try to show that some trends prevailing in early childcare norms and practices of Jews in early modern Poland are recognized by the today in medicine as supporting infant survival. And therefore, it was the early childcare among Jews that might have contributed to lower infant and child mortality, and in turn, add substantially to the population growth rates. Those beneficial trends are related to the following aspects of early childcare. First feeding, postnatal isolation and the employment of in-home wet nurse, remaining with one source of breast milk, late and control weaning, as well as prolonged and intense breastfeeding. Now I want to describe three of those aspects, uh, starting with first feeding. According to modern medical knowledge, an infant is born with a passive immunity, which helps to protect the fetus from microorganisms and some viruses familiar to the mother's body. In order to develop its own uh, immune system, a newborn needs, among others, a boost of AGA antibodies, which can be found in the first milk, produced by the end of the pregnancy and during the first two to four days, which is known as colostrum. Concentrated and quite easy to digest colostrum has roughly 100 times more IgA antibodies than regular breast milk and contains a range of factors that may impact the immune system. Moreover, colostrum contains leukocytes and growth factors that may affect neonatal intestinal development. It provides a source of energy as well, which may impact IgG absorption in the newborn and stimulate effective immune response. Although very important, all those benefits of yellowish, thick and sticky milk were unknown until the modern times. Consequently, for thousands of years, in many cultures, infants were deprived of important immunities, and many mothers were exposed to the risk of what we called milk fever. In the light of modern medical knowledge, we know that before the invention of advanced formula in modern times, a newborn nursed with colostrum had a better chance of survival than an infant left hungry or fed in other usually unclean ways. Consequently, the society practicing feeding with colostrum might have a lower rate of infant mortality. Now, regarding Jews in early modern Poland, we don't know exactly when Jewish mothers started to breastfeed their offspring. However, there was no recommendation to abstain from nursing the infant with colostrum. Such recommendations, on the other hand, were strongly present in the Christian society. In old Poland, it was widely believed that colostrum was impure and harmful to the baby. Consequently, breastfeeding usually started a few days after birth or only when the mother was ritually cleansed, which could be even 40 days after birth. For the first few days, the newborns were often given honey, very hard to digest, instead of mother's milk. This long delay in first nursing deprived those poor newborns of the benefits of colostrum 
and those seriously hindered the development of baby's immune system and contributed to the high levels of infant mortality. The second aspect I want to discuss is the employment of in-home wet nurses. Modern medical science shows that for the first weeks after birth, newborns are protected by antibodies they received through placenta, those IgG we just mentioned. Those antibodies are conditioned by the environment the mother lives in and are responsive only to the microorganism to which she has been exposed. They protect the baby from familiar germs, but they are not sufficient to fight unknown germs to which the baby is exposed with a change of environment. Consequently, avoiding exposure of the baby to unfamiliar environment preserves infant's immunity and contributes to its healthy development. Hence, in addition to other side effects, moving babies from their mother's environment, for example, to a wet nurse house, may endanger them with infections and root and unknown viruses in new surroundings. Based on this medical knowledge, one can speculate that a community which preferred to employ in-home wet nurses had a lower rate of infant mortality. In Jewish society in Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, when a mother died, or when she could not or refused to breastfeed, or when she was a widow and planned to remarry, or even when she planned in advance her ne next pregnancy, a wet nurse was hired. Since finding a Jewish wet nurse was rather difficult, the so Shulchan Aruch allowed the baby to be breastfed by a Gentile woman, but simultaneously it added a strict rule to bring a wet nurse to mother's home for supervision. Consequently, the Jews preferred to employ in-home wet nurse and try to avoid sending their babies to a wet nurse house, which was a common practice among Christians who were not obligated to bring a wet nurse home. Although the employment of in-home wet nurses was viewed as important due to the supervision it enabled, in the light of modern medicine, it seems that the halachic rule and the consequent practice not only protected babies from ne negligence, but incidentally also reduced the exposure of the infant to pathogens and root and to the germs of a new environment wet nurse house. Thus it might have contributed along other factors to the high uh, levels of survival among the infants in Jewish society in Poland, Lithuania. The last aspect I want to discuss is, to remain, is the remaining with the single source of breast milk. Modern research has found evidence linking an increase in infant mortality to the switching of wet nurses. Hence, I claim that maintaining the same wet nurse, the same source of breast milk, could increase a child's chances of survival. Shulchan Aruch reinforced the Talmudic opposition to switching the woman nursing a baby if the baby knew her, and makir ota. In order to avoid a change of milk source or abrupt twinning resulting from a new pregnancy, Jewish women in Poland, Lithuania, were, for example, allowed to use contraceptive measures. Furthermore, hiring a wet nurse was permitted before the baby knows its mother and came with the commitment for a prolonged employment in which the employee, the wet nurse, was prohibited from getting pregnant. Although halachic rule did not specify the kind of dangers posed to the child when changing a wet nurse, its application limited such practice and therefore might have contributed to the lower infant mortality among Jews in Poland. In early modern Christian Europe, on the other hand, though switching wet nurses was known to affect child willingness to nurse, there was no religious law or any other law forbidding this change. On the contrary, in some cases, a change of nursing woman was recommended, for example, during the menstruation. Many Christian children had four or even more wet nurses during their early childhood. In Poland, even in the late 18th century, the sources advised that a wet nurse should not breastfeed during the menstrual period 
because babies that nursed during that time often got sick. The sources recommended that the replacement wet nurse should be found for that short period, or any time baby uh, should be given a kind of milk serum with eggs, which was obviously uh, too heavy for the immature digestive system of the little baby. A change of wet nurse was recommended also when the wet nurse was sick or when the baby got sick. So those three aspects are only an example of many more aspects in Jewish early child care and infant care that might have influenced the low infant mortality among Jews in Poland, Lithuania, and thus contributed to this unprecedented population growth among Jews in old Poland.